Wyatt's favorite subjects was how the pyramids were made. His interest was increased by the fact that he learned that Imhotep was the architect of the first pyramid as well as the first to use stone columns. In our video on Joseph, you can see all the evidence which shows that Imhotep was the biblical Joseph of the seven years of plenty and seven years of famine, as well as being one of the children of Jacob, whose name was changed by God to Israel. A study of the earliest civilizations shows that they were not without skilled knowledge of building. It was Ron's belief that these early civilizations were the recipients of pre-flood knowledge passed down from the family of Noah, and that that knowledge was slowly lost as time progressed. Even today, we could not replicate their building of the massive pyramids. Yet there were a number of early civilizations which built these massive constructions. So how did they do it? It's a question that has been asked down through the ages. Over the years, I've had quite an interest in archaeology and also ancient history, which of course has to do with archaeology. So I ran across this uh, statement in the Greek historian's writing, his name's Herodotus, that described how these were built. And it says, um, the method employed was to build it in steps, or as some call them, <coughs> tiers or terraces. When the base was complete, the blocks for the first tier above it were lifted from ground level by contrivances made of short timbers. On this first tier, there was another, which raised the blocks a stage higher, then yet another, which raised them higher still. Each tier or story had its own set of levers, or it may be that they used the same one, which, being easy to carry, they shifted up from stage to stage as soon as its load was dropped into place. Mm -hmm. And then I was reading uh, an archaeological magazine that told about the sunboat that they had found by the pyramid and that they had found some, a lot of wooden things in there. Some of them would not fit on the boat. After they got the boat completely finished, they had these things left over. They didn't know what they were used for, so they put them in storage. As it turns out, those uh, were timbers from these pyramid building machines. Oh. And then in the hieroglyphics, <coughs> pardon me out at Saqqara, they had some base relief hieroglyphics that showed the working mechanism of this machine. What you see here is an entrance marker to part of the tomb complex of Onias, one of the third dynasty pharaohs. Now here is a cartouche that tells us who this man was. You'll note that the cartouche is laying on its side instead of standing upright. This represents the fact that this person is dead. You'll notice that the symbols inside the cartouche are still upright. Now these things represent uh, one of the many deities of Egypt. Therefore they do not die. Just the man himself dies and these transmigrate into the next pharaoh in line. What we have here, reading from right to left, is Onias died. We have the spade symbolizing the fact that they buried him. Then we have the symbols of the pyramid building machines. And this also means to build. It appears in front of symbols of temples and this sort of thing. And then we have a pyramid, which of course is the tomb. Now represented here, we have the gifts that are presented to the dead Pharaoh to maintain him uh, in the hereafter. Now then, a blow up of these strange objects that we see in the hieroglyphs up here is this. Uh, and you will notice that if you pull this curved lever downward, that this portion will be raised here. All right, now as a glyph, then we will find that this is just the right-hand portion of this glyph, and if in your imagination you can place another uh, symmetrical mirror image of this object, 
uh, then you have a lifting mechanism. Now Herodotus, the father of history, a Greek historian that uh, traveled with the Persian army and uh, on his own in antiquity, states in his book that the pyramids were built in steps or different levels and that the uh, Egyptians used a contrivance made of short timbers that lifted the stone from one level to the other. So if we place this contrivance on the ground and then we place another one at a higher level and then of course we can place them as necessary up the side of the pyramid that you, the winch can be turned and the stone lifted and of course it's lifted up and then moved over to a machine that's in the lowered position and lifted up and then moved to yet another machine and by this method the stone can be lifted as high up the side of the pyramid as necessary. There's been several people that we've discussed this with that uh, have uh, wondered if this would uh, indeed lift a fairly heavy load. Now, so we uh, built a large variety of this machine. Now we just put three sets of levers here, uh, which of course this will demonstrate that it doesn't take a whole lot of levers or sets of these uh, levers to lift pretty heavy load. Now we have a compact car here which approximates the weight of the average stone on the uh, pyramids. So we'll, at this time, attempt to lift this car. Okay, you uh, have seen a demonstration here that this machine will indeed lift a fairly heavy load. Now, an engineer that I asked to uh, do a little study on this and give me an idea of what the maximum uh, capabilities of a machine like this were, said that it is possible to lift 500 tons, 60 feet in the, into the air, with a machine built or constructed of wood. Along with the hieroglyphs and the description in Herodotus's histories of how these uh, large monuments were constructed, we have found around the base of the pyramid holes in the stone. Now these are at the proper distance to anchor the machines that were used to lift the stones up the sides of the pyramids. Uh, there's a cluster of these holes in this particular area and the multi-lift machine was anchored here and over to the south of this uh, area. This is where the stones for the uh, chamber, burial chamber itself were lifted up. Also where the different tiers are the stepped uh, stones were lifted into place. Now there are other sets of holes all around the perimeter of the pyramid. This is where the lesser stones were, uh, machines were anchored. You need to say a few words uh, about the pyramid building machines. Is uh, Nasset Hassan. Uh, he's the director of antiquities in Egypt and uh, he will uh, give you an idea of what he uh, believes about these, uh, how the pyramids were built. Now I am very glad to see that this machine which Mr. Wright uh, showed me and I think maybe they used some something like that because uh, there in her beliefs we know that this cartouche of Onis uh, 
tomb in the uh, western side of the Great Pyramid, and also this letter means Nether, means the beautiful, and uh, these uh, three little signs are not exactly maybe uh, show us another machine or another parts of machine or something like that, maybe of wood or maybe of anything else. And then when I uh, read about this machine which they used, I think it is suitable for left each block for a stage to another and they use many machines in order to lift these uh, blocks uh, of wood and uh, it is suitable for uh, uh, for huge blocks of granite and for limestone and uh, the treatment which I have seen on the television or something uh, here at Egypt and uh, it is a suitable thing to lift Okay, we have gotten three of these machines uh, set up along on the different steps of the pyramids here in order to demonstrate how these uh, magnificent monuments were constructed. Now, uh, the Minister of the Antiquities asked us not to use the stone uh, because of the possibility that uh, the stone might be dropped and damage the pyramids. Uh, these, uh, although they look well preserved from a distance, there's a lot of loose rocks and occasionally a stone will fall, and we don't want to wish to damage these. So we're using a carton or a large box to uh, illustrate the process. So if you will watch, they have lowered the first machine or the lowest machine into position and uh, they're lifting the rock or in this case the carton up to the full height of this uh, machine now of course when the pyramids were new you didn't have the ragged stones uh, placed around on the structure uh, to get in the way and so uh, things were much easier at this particular time with these stones in the way it makes it more difficult to uh, get uh, uh, the proper idea of how they accomplish this now they move the carton back to the next machine now we feel that they had a winch device that uh, sat on top of the uh, machine that the second machine and the third machine and that a loop of rope was thrown out over the stone and with using sand beneath the stone uh, they were able to slide it along over to the machine that was behind and up on the next step. Now this, of course, meets Herodotus' description, and uh, due to the fact that he only was able to see a hieroglyph, he described them as a contrivance. Now when we get to the top of this second machine, of course, you see there is a third machine that could be lowered down, and uh, the stone placed on that and taken higher. And then step by step, you slowly work your way up the top or up the side of this uh, pyramid and as you can see at this present time you would not want to venture too far up the side with these machines because you definitely get into trouble and there have been several people that have fallen to their death by trying to climb these stones because many of them are loose from the weathering and from the fact that uh, the stones that supported them have fallen away but these machines could be fastened to each other and they could uh, be tied by ropes the top machines to the point that it was impossible or nearly impossible to uh, have a much of an accident now as they got to the top of the pyramid uh, they started filling in the steps with stones cut for that purpose and these were of course harder stones that prevented uh, water from getting in and eroding away the sides of the pyramid, which of course is what's happened uh, at this point. 
some of the later rulers and the local populace uh, felt that this was an ideal place to quarry stones. So rather than go off a few miles away and perhaps bring the stones across the river, they came over here and got uh, stones off these structures. And of course, these stones are already cut. Uh, before Joseph's experience there and the story that's related in the Bible about him and the famine and his dreams and all that, uh, Egypt, Egypt was a collection of city-states uh, with very little, if any, political affiliation. And uh, when the famine was over and uh, the seven years, during that seven years, this Pharaoh Djoser was elevated to the most wealthy ind individual in the world because this famine extended up into Canaan. As you know, J Jacob had to send his sons down to get food. And so anyway, suddenly this man uh, just had Boku uh, gold and everything else. And it appears that he wanted to be immortalized, uh, you know, in stone. A lot of people do that today. They build big buildings and that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So anyway, he went to Imhotep. He was commissioned to build a memorial uh, that would last and uh, perpetuate or immortalize the memory of this uh, Joser. Ron was not trying to figure out how the pyramids were built. He had studied ancient history and was familiar with what Herodotus had written when he first went to Egypt to see the Step Pyramid. When he saw the hieroglyph at Onias' tomb, God revealed to him its interpretation. Just as God had given Joseph the interpretation of Pharaoh's dream, I believe without a doubt, he gave Ron insight in the same manner and showed him how the pyramids were built. And he revealed to him how to make the simple device, just as he had revealed to him the grain pits of the seven-year famine. When it was God's time to reveal the things he had hidden for thousands of years to the fallen world, like Samuel and Isaiah, when God called, Ron answered, Here am I, send me. God is still looking for people who love him and are willing to be called according to his purpose. Each of us can be used of God. We just have to be willing.